Uh, today's webinar is the top 10 Outlook productivity hacks you hopefully never knew. Uh, you'll see, I'll go through the, um, the outline of what we're going to cover today. And I tried to choose some productivity hacks, some good tips that I found over the years of teaching Outlook that aren't, aren't kind of your basic tips that a typical instructor would teach you. I found, I think, some kind of cool ones that uh, I'm hoping you guys don't know these, uh, but I'll get into the outline in a minute. Uh, I'm Christine, in case you guys haven't attended a webinar yet that I've run, but I'm Christine Irons. I work for CompUEs and Great Canadian Training. Uh, and before I started with uh, CompUEs and Great Canadian Training. I worked for York University in Toronto, grew up in Ottawa, but moved to Toronto, spent years and years and years at York University. And I was doing the same thing. I was teaching faculty and staff. So I was teaching technical courses and doing course design. Um, and I'm a learning specialist. And then I moved back to Ottawa four years ago and uh, basically, I'm doing the same kind of thing through CompUEs and Great Canadian Training. So I have, I hate to say it, I mean, it's a good thing and a bad thing, but I have decades of experience of technical training experience under my belt. And we always like to give quick little fun tips about uh, the instructors that are teaching the webinars. Um, and I know for those of you that have attended the webinars that I've taught before, it's always the same tip, uh, but I can add a little bit to it this time. So I'm the lead singer of the, um, it's called SOS, the ABBA experience. Um, so when I'm not teaching, we are running shows all around Ontario. Uh, we have some coming up in Toronto, Montreal, not just Ottawa. But the kind of cool little tip is about three weeks ago, we actually were playing at the Canadian Tire Center. So we were playing for the Ottawa Senators game. Uh, and that was kind of cool. And it was on TV. And But yeah, if, if you guys like ABBA, we'll be playing in three weeks at the Blackburn Hamlet Fun Fair. Uh, and if you do come, come and say hi to me. And wear your nice, your 70s outfits. Okay. On to the webinar. If you're new to Zoom, uh, pay attention because you should have a little control toolbar where you can actually load a chat screen. Uh, for a couple of reasons, you'll want this chat screen up. One is, as you saw in the chat, I just saw Melanie put it up a few minutes ago, but Mel is here to help you out with any technical issues that you might have. Uh, so you could just pop a chat in and she'll help you out. Uh, and also, by the way, if you do end up getting disconnected from this webinar, just connect again. Go back to the email, the email invite that you have. You can connect in again. Uh, if you're using your phone, you can dial in again. Uh, but any other technical issues, pop it into the chat. Uh, the other reason that you guys want the chat up is that um, you can ask questions. If if I see, I'll try to look at the, the um, chat screen. If it's a question that I can answer quickly while I'm doing the webinar, I will answer you quickly. If it's something that's going to be more involved, what I'll probably do is wait to the end of the webinar to get into those types of questions, just so that uh, we kind of make it through the webinar without sidetracking too much. But put your questions in. I'll also give you time at the end of the webinar to put your questions in, and then I will get to all questions. And last thing here is that all of our webinars are made available on our YouTube channel pretty quickly within a 24 hour turnaround period. Uh, you guys will get an email. You'll get an email that has the link to the recorded webinar, um, but you're also gonna have some other resources sent to you. All the perks of being part of the webinar. So uh, one of the extra things that you're actually gonna get is that I prepared some more tips. I think there are about three extra tips that I wouldn't have had time to do during this webinar that I thought were, were pretty neat. So it's put together in a document and that will be sent to you as well.
Okay. But if, if I'm showing anything in this webinar and you're thinking, yeah, this is really cool. I've got to write this down and you're trying to keep up with it. Don't worry about it. Just enjoy the webinar. You can always go back to it on YouTube and you can fast forward. You can go to whatever spot and review anything you want to review. Okay. So just two minutes before we jump into the webinar. Uh, to explain, because I keep talking about Great Canadian Training and CompUEs, and I know it can be confusing because I'm talking about two different companies. They're actually the same company. They're sister companies. It really depends on where you're taking your training from. If you, if you do take training through us, register for training. Um, if you are in the Ottawa or Quebec area, you would be going through CompUEs. And then anywhere outside the Ottawa and Quebec area, uh, basically, uh, sometimes I say North America, but we actually have been doing training sort of around the world. Um, you would be going through great Canadian training, but we offer both online and um, face to face training. If you're in Ottawa, we actually have a training facility in Ottawa where you can come down either with a private group or join one of our public classes downtown. Uh, so that that's one of the perks of being in Ottawa. Uh, but we offer, um, like I said, public, private. We offer um, custom application database development. I mean, basically, we, we offer everything. Uh, well, you can see here on the screen, there are many reasons, many reasons that you might want to register for some of the courses. Uh, but one of the ones that I do mention a lot is that I like the idea that these companies don't cancel your courses. So if there's a low enrollment for a course, you're not going to receive a cancellation or, you know, a postponement or whatever. You can guarantee that you'll get training if you need the training when you've registered for it. So I think that's pretty neat. One of the other ones that stands out to me here too is that you get 24 seven after training support. I get asked that a lot too during my training after the training's finished, what do we do if we need some help after we've done the training? Well, you're going to get 24 seven after training support um, on all software and professional skills training. Okay. Oh, and by the way, we offer both technical and professional skills. It's not just the technical courses. I know I'm teaching you the technical skills right now, but uh, we have some great uh, so, um, soft skills instructors that teach things like, you know, communication skills, presentation skills, all those kind of really neat things, project management skills, um, not the technical side, the theory kind of side of it. All right, without further ado, let's see what I've chosen to cover in this webinar. Uh, now, some of these topics might not be um, not make sense to you until we actually get there, but I'll give you the list of what we're going to cover here. So I'm going to start with, uh, I'll teach you something about templates. I'm actually going to show you two different ways of using email templates. And if you don't know what a template is, I'll explain when we start to do it. But I am going to show you two different ways, two different options. And then I'll show you something called quick parts. I kind of see step one or um, tip one and tip two very similar. It's quick, efficient ways of getting um, information into your emails, but it is, it's actually going to be three different ways of doing it between these two steps. And then I'll teach you how to create a grown-up signature using something called signature templates. Oh, a lot of people don't realize that these are here. You'll see, okay, when we do it. Uh, then something called, I call the career saver rule. I'll explain when we get there. Then the VIP rule. Again, I'll explain it all when we get there. I've given these cute little names. Uh, a method for achieving inbox zero. So keeping your inbox really clean. And then we have another, the boss rule. Uh, have Outlook text your phone. 
I actually, I found this one recently. I didn't know you could do this. And I just thought this was pretty neat. So I'll show you how you do that. And it doesn't matter, by the way, if, if you're um, Apple or uh, Android or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll give you a passive aggressive email tip and then turn your emails into calendar events. And I know a lot of this actually has to do with emails. A lot of the really cool tips I found had to do with emails more than calendaring. But that extra handout that Mel is going to be sending you guys, as I recall, a couple of the tips in there have to do with calendaring. So you will get some for calendaring. All right. So let me pop this out. I have, I'm going to just close this one down here. Guys, I have my email loaded, my Christine um, email through Great Canadian Training. I'm going to use that. I don't have anything confidential in here, uh, just plain old emails. So I don't mind you guys seeing this. So I'm going to use my uh, Christine at Great Canadian Training. I do, in the background, have another account loaded in Outlook on the web. It's called Student One. It's just another email account because there's going to be a, a point. One of these tips that I'm going to give you, I need to email this email. So at some point I'll have to switch over, but really for most of this, I'm going to be using this email. And this is the full installed version of Outlook. It's not the web version, although pretty much, uh, Actually, I think everything that I'm showing you in these tips can also apply if you guys are using Outlook on the web. I just happen to be using the full install of Outlook. Okay, but you can you can do it with both. I, I'm just hesitating because now I'm thinking the, the one template option that I'm about to show you might not be, be available on Outlook in the web. I'll have to check that. Okay. So I'm going to start with number one, save time by creating email templates. Actually, I'll just turn this off so you're not distracted with video. You can just focus on my email here. So we'll start with email templates. And like I said, I'm going to show you guys two different ways of doing templates. So a template is something like, have you ever um wanted to send emails out where you've already sent an email with contents like that in the past so you want the same email text you might massage it a little bit but send it to somebody else create a template it too many times kevin says yeah yeah exactly and you know what i used to do uh, I don't know if you were doing this, Kevin, but I would go back to, I would search in my sent mail for an old email that I sent out like that. And then I would copy the text and I would paste it in. And I know a lot of people do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you a couple of options here. The first option I'm going to show you, and the reason that I'm showing you guys two different options is there are benefits for each one. One of them is save it as a template like an actual template email message that's outside your Outlook. So what I'm about to show you, it's going to end up saving it as a file where you're going to choose where you want to put it on your desktop or on a share drive. If you want other people to access this template, you can do that. You can create a folder on a share drive, put these templates in the folder and anybody that has access to that folder can use your templates. Okay, so that's going to be my first option. So what I'll do is let's go with a scenario where, well, it's, oh, it's warm weather now. It's starting to get, at least here in Ottawa. I don't know where you guys are, but we're having beautiful warm weather. Oh, save as drafts. Leslie, yes. That's another thing I hear people do. They'll save it as a draft and then they'll use it. They'll keep calling it up from their drafts folder. So let's say we're responsible to organize, to organize the barbecue every month. Every month we have a barbecue through work and we're responsible for organizing the barbecue. So every month I'm sending out an email that says, you know, this month's barbecue will be held on this date, this location, this time, whatever. 
I'm going to create a template for that. So the first thing you do is start a new email message. So I'll go up and click new email. What you're going to put into the email is the things that are going to stay the same every single time you send this email. So if it's going to go to the same people every time, put their email addresses in. Saves you time. I'm not going to go that far. I'll just pretend it goes to different people. We don't always invite the same people to our barbecue. Uh, but subject, maybe it's always the same subject. So I'll just put, um, I'll just call it BBQ. Whatever. Keep it simple. And then in the body of the email, you know, you would type this month's BBQ will be held. And then I would put something like date, time, location. And I won't fill in the date, time, and location because they change every time I send this email. And then, you know, you have please RSVP to blah, 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 blah. I won't put you guys through that. And then you'd have your signature or whatever. Okay. Now we're going to save this as a template. So I'm going to go up to file, kind of like Word, right? File, save as, or Excel. You have to choose where you want to put it, but I'm going to warn you guys because I make this mistake almost every time I save a template and I've actually caught myself right now and I want to show you the mistake I make so you guys don't make the mistake you could do this by accident two things you're going to do here you're going to tell Excel or Excel you're going to tell Outlook where you want to save this email and um, you're going to go to the very bottom where it says save as type and you're going to change it from the regular Outlook message format to a template because you don't want to accidentally ever overwrite this email. So you're going to save it as a template. I would suggest your first step would be to go to the bottom and tell it to save it as a template before you tell it where to put the template. Because watch what happens if I do it the other way around. If I choose a location for this template, so let's say I go to my desktop and I have, oh, here, I'll put it in my webinar Outlook top 10 files folder. This is where I want to save it. Then I go to the bottom to switch it to Outlook template. Watch what happens. It changes the location and it wants to force you to put this template in the Microsoft templates folder. And I can't tell you how many times I've done that and I haven't noticed it's changed the location and I save it. And then I go to look for it afterwards in that folder that outlook top 10 folder and it's not there and i can't find it so i would say change it to template once it's changed to template then you can go in and say and i want you to put it on my desktop in my webinar folder hmm. okay just in case that ever happens to you and then you can give it whatever name you want it automatically picks up the subject line and i'm okay with bbq right now but you can call it whatever you want OFT is an Outlook template. And I'll click Save. Okay. You don't need this message anymore. This was just to set up your template. You can close this now. And it says, do you want to save your changes? You know how it, uh, talking about drafts, it wants you to save it as a draft, right? But I don't want to do that. I'll just say no. Okay, so let's pretend it's a few weeks later, we're ready to send out our barbecue email. I'll show you two different ways of accessing this. One way is to go to your files and folders. Let me just open it up. Of course, it opened on my other screen. So I put it on my desktop. I put it in my webinar, Outlook Top 10. There it is. I just double click it. Opens up, fill in who it's going to fill in the date, the time, the location, and send it. And then every time you use it, it's back to the way it was here. It doesn't overwrite the original one. And this is why you can put it in a folder on your share drive and have multiple people access this folder. Um, they just go to that folder, double click it, open it up, fill it in, send it, okay? The other 
option, actually, I'll leave that open. The other option is if this is one that you use a lot, rather than have to go and dig for this, like go into the desktop, go into a folder and a subfolder and a sub subfolder, what you can do is this. Down at the bottom of your screen where, you know, on your computer, on your taskbar at the bottom, you have a whole bunch of little icons for applications that you're using. And one of them will be your little Outlook icon. You can take your template, right click on top of it. So I'm holding my right mouse button and I'm going to drag it and drop it right on top of that Outlook icon on the bottom and let go. And it pins the template there. So I'll just click off of it. When you need to use that template, all you have to do is go down to your Outlook icon and right click your Outlook icon and any pinned templates will show there. You just click it and it loads. I know, Mind, I was the same. Oh, I remember I was the same. And you can have several of them pinned there. Then you don't have to go to your drafts and you don't have to go searching. Okay, now one of the benefits, <laughs> I love your comments, guys. One of the benefits of doing it in this method is that you can attach files. So if your template has to have a file attachment every time it goes, you can attach the file as part of the template, which is great. One of the drawbacks to doing this is that you cannot use a template in a reply. So if I have an email here from Joy and I click reply, you cannot reply with that template. But I am gonna show you another method anyway, but that's one of the drawbacks. So there are perks, there are drawbacks, whatever. Okay. Oh yes, thank you. Thanks, Melanie. Okay, so another option for templates is I'm going to start a new email and show you something. So I'll go to my home ribbon, I'll start a new email. And again, I actually until recently didn't know that this was here. It was introduced in 2013 and I never saw it show up in 2013. So as long as you guys are using 2013 or later, you should have this. When you start a new message on the message ribbon, which should load by default, go way down to the right, the very last button. There is a button that says view templates. This has nothing to do with the template that I just showed you before. Just get that out of your mind right now. View templates. It's gonna load a screen on the right. And there are already going to be um, a couple of templates that Microsoft already created where if you need to reply later to a person, you just click this template, I'll reply later and it will fill it in for you or I'm running late, it just fills in that text. You can delete these if you mouse over these, there's a little trash bin, so you don't have to keep these, but you can create your own templates. Right at the bottom, there's a little link that says template. So you give your template a title, um, like I could just call it, uh, what am I gonna call it here? Um, I'll just call it my template. I'm not feeling very creative right now, my template. But something obviously that makes sense to you so you know what you're about to insert into your email. And then you type the text that you want. So, you know, I could type something like, um, uh, this is a response to your email. Okay, you could type whatever you want as your template. Or this month's barbecue will be held on date, time, location. You could fill all that in. And then you click save. And there you've got a template. So I'll start from scratch. I'll close this email. Now it's time for me to, to send a new email with that text. I'll click new email. Go down, click view templates. I'll click my template. And it fills it in. Like I said, it could have been the, this month's barbecue will be held on. The good thing about this option, mind blown again. The good thing about this option is that you can use it with replies. Now I have to show you because I tested this out and you might get caught like this. Let me close this. 
So I have an email here and I want to reply with that template. When I click, oh, I'll discard this just to start from scratch. When I click reply, I don't, oh, I do have the view templates. Okay, it was something else I was thinking. So yes, you can reply with templates. So you have the templates option up here and reply with your template, which you couldn't do in the first method that I showed you. So there's a perk to it this way. Um, another perk is these templates are saved in your Outlook, meaning no matter where you are, you can access these templates. So if you go on a trip and you log into Outlook on the web or whatever, you're gonna have access to these templates. They travel with your Outlook. Whereas you saw the other method, it saved it as a separate file. Um, what else? Uh, like I said, you can use it with replies. Oh, one of the drawbacks to this is all your templates you can only have 32 kilobytes worth of templates. Like it, it has a size limit. So if you create too many templates here, eventually you're gonna create a template and try to save it. And then uh, Outlook will tell you, sorry, uh, there's not enough room. You're gonna run out of space. That's a drawback. So they're for quick little things. But yeah, that's great. I'll just close this. You can't attach files though. There's no way of attaching files in that. Okay, so that was two templates. Now the third option for getting content into an email that you use a lot is something called quick parts. And by the way, what I show you here with quick parts, you can use this in Word as well. Word has quick parts, same location, same method. Everything I'm teaching you here, you can use in Word. So I'm going to start a new message. I'll go to my home ribbon, new email. Um, what you do is you put some contents in. You can either, well, you could copy something from Word if you want, or if you have it in an email already, you know, I could have something like, hi, I'll just put this is a canned response that you can easily use with quick parts. Something like that. Take care. This being, okay. What you do is you select the text. You go up to insert. And then almost near the end of the ribbon is quick parts. And now I'll show you this one I created earlier, but I'm going to save what I've typed here as a quick part. So I'll go down and click save selection to quick parts gallery. No limit, no limit like the templates that I just showed you. You give your quick part a name. Um, I'll just call it, uh, I'll just, I don't know. I'll call it test, <laughs> test, and I'll click okay. Okay, now let me close an email. When you start a new email message and you want to insert that text, you click in the body of the email, go up to your insert, quick parts. There it is. You just click on it and it's inserted. And like I said, you have no limits and you can copy anything into quick parts, pictures, links, whatever. They can all be part of your quick parts. I created one. Uh, I was pretending that I'm always getting questions, the same question about how do you create quick steps? Quick steps is another thing in Outlook. How do you create quick steps? Well, I just go up to insert, quick parts, click this one that I created here and look at the content it inserted with pictures and everything. Formatting, it does not seem available. If it's not available, it could be that you're not clicked in the body of the message. You have to be in the body of the message. And if you're creating a quick part, make sure you have some text selected, but you have to be in the body of the message. Okay, so, so many methods, guys, to put content in where you don't have to copy and paste and type and whatever. Okay, so that's your, that is your number one tip, number two tips. Number one was a combination of two different templates. Number three, creating a grown-up signature using signature templates. 
So, you know, your signatures are when you send an email, you get an auto. Well, you can see here, Joy has an automatic signature at the bottom of her email. I'm going to start a new email. I think that this is the easiest way to set up your signature. And I know some of you guys might have standard signatures that you have to use for work. They, they set it all up for you and you just make sure your name is in there and whatever. But I don't know, you could use this, maybe this method I'm about to show you for home. Maybe you have a home business or something and you just can't get creative enough. Like you want a nice creative signature, but you just don't feel creative. This is what I'm about to show you. So when you start a new message, you have a signature button halfway down your ribbon. I'll go to signatures. You might already have some set up. You can have so many different signatures. It's not just one signature, but I'm going to create new. Oh, you use this? Yeah. So I'm going to create a new signature. I'll call this one Christine's Fancy Signature. Okay. And then down here is where you typically type up your signature, but I, I want one really creative. So down at the bottom is a link here that says get signature templates. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll mention that. That's a good point in your chat. When you click get sig signature templates, now my, my browser is doing something really funny, but uh, there is a link that says get template. And then you click download. It's going to download a Word document. Don't worry, it's not going to do anything to your Outlook. So I'm going to download it. Um, and Okay, maybe I'll just choose open. You can save it or just open it up and it will open up. A Word document that looks like, give it a second. There, we're in Word. Look, this is Microsoft. Microsoft has created all these signature templates. So you can scroll through and find one that you like. I don't know, maybe I'll just go with this one here. You can edit it so you could put your own name in there. Whoops, I have to enable editing at the top. I'll do this one here. So, you know, you can put your name in. Uh, you can change the picture. So you can click on the picture, insert pictures. I just threw one of my pictures in here. Whoops, I have to resize it. Well, you know, make it, we don't want it upside down, but you know, make it yours. And then in the top left corner, these are all little tables. You can just select the table, copy it, go to your Outlook. And paste it in. And there's your gorgeous signature. I'll have to figure out why it went over to the right. I've done this so many times. It hasn't gone over to the right, but I was doing it quickly there. But then you don't even have to think about how you're going to create the signature. Now, uh, there is a good point in the chat. I avoid putting images in as they show up as an attachment. They do sometimes. If you have an image, um, they do sometimes, depends on the email system, they do show up as attachments. Not only that, but they take up extra quota in your email. So yeah, you're right. Um, you, I mean, you could still use these signature templates and then delete the picture. You don't need the image. Oh, you can change. Ah, thank you. I wasn't even, oh, won't even let me change the alignment. Weird, eh? The left justification. Oh, now it did. So yeah, this was pretty neat. Okay, let me cancel this. I'll close this. Number four tip, I call this one, the career saver rule, career saver rule. Have you ever, and guys, be honest, have you ever received an email that's made you kind of angry and you respond right away and you send it and you wish you had not sent it? You wish you had given yourself a cool down period but you've already sent it. Well, what you can do is you can create what's called a mail rule in your email 
or okay, but wrong info. Yes. Or wrong info. Or uh, many times I've sent an email where I said I'm attaching a file and then I forget to attach the file. And then I got to send another one and say, sorry, I didn't send the attachment, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so what you can do is you can set up a mail rule and you can tell it whenever I send a message, don't send it right away, wait a minute. And then it gives you the chance to recall it if you want. And then after a minute or two minutes or three minutes or whatever you want, just remember, it's going to apply for all the emails that you send. So it depends on how much of a delay you want. So I'm gonna teach you how to create a mail rule. On your home ribbon, just past halfway down is a rules button. So I'll click rules. And I'm going to go to, there are different options. If I go to create rule, I, you know what, we'll do the create rule later. This one, I'm going to go to manage rules and alerts. And I'm gonna click the button new rule. Okay, so your mail rules, these are uh, automatic things that happen in your emails. Uh, for example, you could create a mail rule that says, every time I get an email with the word publication in the subject, don't put it in my inbox, automatically put it in this folder. And your mail rules run all the time in the background. So it's always checking. So if there's an email coming in that has the word publication, it'll just automatically put it into a folder for you. So it's these automatic kind of like, kind of like macros, but they run all the time. So I'm going to choose, um, where is it? Apply right near the bottom, apply rule on messages I send. Apply rule on messages I send. Then I'll go down to the bottom and click next. And the thing is, I want this to apply to all messages I send. So I'm not going to choose what the condition is. Like you could choose a condition that says, um, if I'm sending a message to my boss, Joy Newhold, then apply this rule. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave this all blank and I'm gonna click next. And it will tell me, this rule will be applied to every message you send. Is this correct? I'll say yes. And then what do I want to do with all of my messages? I want to defer delivery by a number of minutes. So down near the bottom, defer delivery by a number of minutes. I'll put a check mark in there. And then I have to specify how many minutes. So I'll go down to the bottom where it says defer delivery by, and there's a link. A number of minutes. I'll click the link and that's where you choose. One minute, two minutes, whatever. Click OK. Click Next. Uh, this screen allows you to specify exceptions, so exceptions to the rules. Um, don't deferred defer delivery if this, however. So you could, if when you guys have time, you can look through to see what the exceptions are. But I don't have any exceptions. I just want it for all my emails. Next. And then you give your rule a name. I'll just call it defer delivery. And I'll click finish. Uh, it just, that whenever you do these mail rules, it just warns you that these mail rules only run when you have Outlook loaded, which makes sense for this anyway, because you're sending a message, you have to have Outlook loaded. Well, in most cases, not all, but I'll click OK. OK. So now, if I start a new email, and I'm just doing this for fun. I know it's I, like, I never send nasty emails. I don't have that in my system to send a nasty email. But uh, if I did something like, um, I'll call it, this is a raging flame email. And then I type something like, uh, I'll just say mean things. And maybe I even go in and I attach a file. I have a cute little wrath of anger attachment. Okay. When I click send, oh, got to make it bold. The mean things. Okay. 
How about that? Okay, so I'll click send. Whoops. Oh, who am I going to send it to? Uh, okay, Mel, I'm going to send it to you. So you're going to get a raging email from me. <laughs> I would never do that to sweet Mel. Okay, send. Now what happens is where your folders are, you have an outbox. And you can see there's one message in the outbox. But I can catch it, actually. Mel's not going to receive it. So if I go to my outbox, I can delete my raging email before it goes. I have a minute. Oh, yes, it needed my signature. I, I wonder, did I delete it or did I keep my signature? I can't remember. OK. Uh, and by the way, you could edit that email as well. You didn't have to delete it. So if you forgot to attach something, you could just double click it, open it up, attach it, and then send it again. Okay, tip number five, getting there, guys, the VIP rule. So when somebody sends you an email, unless you guys have gone into your notifications, you know how you can go to file options, and then you can edit your notification settings. Uh, do you want to get little dings if emails come in? Or do you want that little... Um, uh, that little, oh, I can't remember that window's called in the bottom right corner kind of pops up when you get a new email. If you haven't gone in and edited those, yes, you're kind of notified things come in. But what if you really wanted to be notified? Maybe there's somebody really important, like my boss, Joy Newhold. I want to make sure that if she sends me an email, I know she sent me an email. She's a VIP. You can actually create a rule from that person to display the new item alert window on your screen. So it's another mail rule. You start off by selecting an email from that person that's already, whatever, in a folder in your inbox, whatever. I already have a message from Joy in my inbox, so I would select that message. Then I would go up to rules. I'll go to create rule. And because I already selected an email from Joy, I get options like when I get an email from the with the selected conditions from Joy Newhold, or it sees the subject of her email, you can base it on a lot of things, but I'm going to choose from Joy Newhold, just generally, if Joy sends me an email, I want to be notified. So from Joy Newhold. Then what I'm going to do is display in the new item alert window. There's a checkbox down here. Okay, I'll click okay. Now what I'll do, oh, it just tells me the rule has been created. So what I'll do is I'll flip over to that other email account that I have loaded in the background somewhere here, my student one email. I'll send a new message. Oh, actually, no, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I would have to get Joy to send me the message. Okay, well, I'll explain to you what happens. When Joy sends me a message, I'm actually going to get a dialogue box pop up on my screen in the middle of the screen that tells me Joy sent an email and I have to click OK that I have seen that message. So it's not something that sort of pops up and then disappears and you might miss it. You'll actually get a full dialogue box. And any of these rules can be del deleted. You can always go to rules, manage rules and alerts. And they're all here, the ones that I'm creating. I can click on them and delete them or edit them. Okay, tip number six, achieving inbox zero. Uh, yeah, you have to actually click on the dialog box for it to go away. It just doesn't disappear. Absolutely. So one of the things that we, or at least that I talk about during Outlook 
training is uh, because I get this question a lot. How do I keep my inbox clean? I, my inbox really gets full. And part of it is that I see messages come in. I read them. Sometimes I don't have time to action them. So they stay in my inbox. So I don't forget it. Sometimes I flag them for follow up, but my inbox starts to get really full. And there's something called the four D's. There's a method of, of, um, keeping things clean and and making sure that you action what has to be actioned and and not do things you don't have to do it's called the four d's do it now or do it delegate defer delete so when you get an email in it you're going to choose one of these four d's to apply to that email either you can do it right now do it reply to that person and do whatever you're supposed to do or delegate it to somebody else to do yeah you guys like that delegate it to somebody else to do um or defer it like you're going to do it but you just can't do it right now defer it to another time or delete it on the spot because it's really not that important now you could manually do those actions or what you can do is you can set up something called quick steps quick steps are like mail rules so up where that rules button is just to the left in this great big white box that i have here you can create quick steps to do things. It's the difference between a quick step and a mail rule though, is I told you your mail rules are running all the time in the background and checking. Whereas quick steps don't run until you click on them to run. So what I could do is I could create four quick steps. I could click this button that says create new. And I could call this one do it. And the do it means I'm going to reply right away and answer them. So down here, what is the action? I'm going to, you have the different categories here. I'm going to respond and I'm going to reply to that person. That's it. Click finish. You now have a do it quick action. I'll do another quick step for delegate. Delegate, I'm going to forward it to somebody else. So the action, if I scroll down, is forward. And I'm not going to fill in the two because it really depends on the email who I'm forwarding it to. Click finish. I'll do another quick step for defer. And defer, defer, I'm going to have three different steps when I click defer. When I defer it, what I want to do is um, I'm going to categorize it with a certain color. If you guys have ever used your category colors, I'll categorize it with my planning color or something like that. Then I want to file it into my defer folder that I've already created here. And then just so I make sure that I definitely do this, I don't just put it off and forget about it in a folder. I want to make sure it goes onto my calendar as an appointment. So I actually do it. So I'll go here where it says choose an action and I will categorize it. So categorize this message and I'll choose the color category. Uh, you know what, it doesn't really matter. I'll just, well, okay, I'll go to all categories and I'll say it's, um, oh, I don't have a planning category. I'll just choose anything, prep. You guys get the idea. And then after it gets categorized, I'm going to add the action. Uh, I want to file it in that folder called defer. So my action is move to a folder and I'll choose the defer folder. And then I'm going to add another action. And my last action is I want to create an appointment. Create an appointment. So I'll click finish. Okay, the delete would just be delete. The action would be delete. But let's say I have an email here. Um, I'll just choose something that doesn't matter, this email here. And I'm going to go up and click defer. Watch what happens. It's set up an appointment. I choose the date, the time that I have time to do it. I'll just say I'll do it uh, Monday from 1 to 1.30. Save and close. It's now put that into my defer folder. There it is. And it's given in a color category. And it's on my calendar. So I won't forget about doing it.
Yeah, you can add so many steps. So do it, delete, defer, and delegate. Okay, I'm just moving quickly so I can get through these for you guys. I'll check your messages in just a few minutes. All right, number seven, the boss rule. Uh, so if I go back to my inbox, again, I want to make sure I don't miss any messages from Joy. So what I want to do is make sure that anytime I have messages here in my inbox from Joy, that they're red and they're bigger. Red is in the red color. Red color and larger font. So it really stands out to me. Now they buried this one. I don't know why it's buried, but conditional formatting is found by going up to view, settings, and then there's a button here, conditional formatting. So you're going to format emails based on a condition. My condition is it has to be Joy Newhold. So I'm going to add a new condition. I'm going to call it, uh, uh, what am I going to call it? How about boss? And then you have to come up with a condition and a format. And it really doesn't matter what you do first and second. I'll do the condition first. So in this case, it's going to be from Joy Newhold. I'll click from and where is she? There she is, Joy. Actually, I think this is her newest one. Let me, hopefully this works. I hope I'm choosing the right one. Click OK, and then OK, and then I have to go to font to choose what format I want. Um, you choose different font faces. I advise you don't choose bold. I made this mistake. The problem with making it bold is it never unbolds. And the thing is, there is already something set up in Outlook that says if it's a new message that you haven't read yet, make it bold. And then you know when you read it, it goes unbold well this will never go unbold so then I keep thinking I haven't read it uh, but you could make it bigger you could change the color to red or whatever click okay 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 and there you go and every time she sends me a new email I won't miss it because it's bigger and red okay Number eight, now this is the one that's a little newer that I didn't know you could do. You can have Outlook text your phone every time you get an email from a specific person. We'll use Joy as our guinea pig here again. So again, I don't wanna miss a message from Joy. Maybe I'm gonna be out and about for a couple of days. I want Outlook to text my phone if I get a message from Joy. So I'm going to select an email that's already there from Joy. I'm going to go up to my home ribbon again, which is the typical ribbon that you're on, where you have your mail rules again. It's another mail rule. So you'll go down to rules, create rule. This time, I'm going to take you guys to this button that says advanced options. And I'm going to choose. The condition is if it's from Joy Newhold. Okay, so I'll put a check mark there from that person. I'll go down to the bottom and click next to go to the next step. What you want is forward it to people or public group. So here, forward it to people or public group. I'll put a check mark there. And I'll go down to the bottom where there's a link where it says forward it to people or public group. You'll click that link. And down at the bottom, in the white space of who I want to forward this to, you're going to type your cell phone number in there. I'm just going to type a bogus cell phone number. Okay. But it's actually your cell phone number and you need an email address for your provider, like at, and then every phone provider has an email and I'm going to show you how to find it. There's a website. Where did it, it's underneath my little, hold on, I can't see. Here it is. There's a website, whoops, I just closed it. Uh, you know what, I'll put this into the chat. Hold on, I'm putting this in the chat, guys. 
So there's a website that you can go to that will give you a list of all the countries. So you choose your country. So I'll choose Canada. And it brings you to a table with all of your providers and what their email addresses are. So let's say it's, uh, um, oh, I don't know what the difference is between these two Bell Mobilities, but let's say it's Bell Mobilities. So it's whatever the phone number is at txt.bell.ca. That's all you need. So I'll copy it. I'll go back to my Outlook. And at the end of my phone number, paste that in. Whoops, it didn't take the at symbol. Just make sure the at goes in there. So it's my phone number at txt.bell.ca. Click OK. And I can just finish. I don't even have to go to the next screen. The next screen is your exceptions. So just click Finish. And now, every time Joy sends me an email, I'll get a text message on my phone. OK, so that's in the chat. Number nine, passive aggressive email tips. I'm just realizing I'm sounding like I'm, a, I'm such a horrible person these last couple of tips. Uh, but a passive aggressive email tip, it is uh, if you've ever used flag for follow up. Um, now, typically you use it for yourself. So you have an email, maybe Joy sent me an email that says, oh, Christine, could you do blah, blah, blah. And I don't have time to do it. Now, if I don't have time to do it, I suggest you guys put it on your calendar, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But uh, but you can also flag it for follow up. And then you can get a little reminder that pops up that tells you to follow up, you know, next week or something. Typically, I use it for myself. But did you know you can send an email to somebody else and you can actually set it to flag them for follow up? So on their email on you know a week or a day or whatever you specify down the road they will get a reminder to do it okay so if you start a new email uh this time i'll send it to jim i'll be passive aggressive with jim um i'll just put just checking you know, uh, just checking back to see if you were able to get me a copy of that really important document. Okay. Up on your message ribbon, three quarters of the way down, you have a little flag for your flag for follow up. Go down to the bottom to add reminder. If you don't want to flag yourself as well, just remove this check mark where it says flag for me. And then down at the bottom, you can choose flag for recipients. And you can set a reminder. And you can choose whatever day they're gonna be reminded, whatever time, click okay. And you'll notice up at the top, it says recipients receive a follow-up by May 13th at 8 a.m. It will pop up and remind them. Oh, wow, this is great news. Yeah, yeah. So it's like for follow-up. It's not just for yourself. I actually won't send that to them. Okay, last one. We're going to make it by one, but I'll still look at your if you have any questions. Uh, last one is, like I said to you guys, um, if you have an email that you cannot get to right away. I would say if it's if it, it's only going to take you two or three minutes, do it. If it's longer than that and you can't get to it right away, I wouldn't just flag for follow-up. I would book it on my calendar to make sure that I actually book time to get it done. Now, there's one way of doing it. You get the email, you read it, you go to your calendar, you start a new appointment, set the time for yourself, but then you can't remember what was in the email. So maybe you have to copy and paste things from the email or try this. You take that email, you drag it, right down on top of where it says calendar, or if you have the little icon showing at the bottom, the little calendar icon and let go, it brings up uh, an appointment window. You choose when you think you'll get to it. So I'll do it Monday at two o'clock to 2.30. It takes all the contents of the email, it puts it in there and you save and close. So if I go to my calendar, 
oh, what's the date today? I set it for Monday. We're on May 10th. So somewhere here, I have too much stuff here. Here it is. So when I open it up, I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. That's a time management thing that we teach. Okay. So I got through the 10 tips, guys. I am going to look through your messages. If you want to put a question into the, the chat, just while I'm waiting for your questions to come in, I want to take you guys here. Just in case you're interested in any kind of training, the Great Canadian Training website, we have our courses. Um, right now, I'll go to Microsoft Courses. Since I was showing you Outlook tips and tricks, we have Outlook training where you can do level one and level two training. You can get more information and register here. Um, but one of the other ones that I wanted to point out to you is, I don't know if you guys are using the desktop version of Outlook, but we also show the online Outlook on the web version, which is slightly different. And it has some features that the desktop version doesn't have. Um, and you're going to find that type of training under Microsoft, Microsoft 365. So we have a course, Microsoft 365, the event, the essentials, where we teach you, if you guys are upgrading to 365, we show you what 365 is and the different little applications that come with it, like planner and um, uh, to do and all the things that come with 365, but a, a big chunk of it, I show you Outlook on the web and how to use Outlook on the web. So that's another option. And then one other thing that you might want to look at if you do go to the Great Canadian Training website is that we have free resources too. So you guys that haven't been in the webinars before, check this out. If you go to free resources, we have lots of things that you might be interested in. Like we have a podcast, uh, Joel Silverstone, um, our soft skills trainer. Oh, such a wonderful soft skills trainer. He also has a podcast, uh, What Makes You a Great Communicator. So check that out. Uh, we have free downloads. We have different ribbons you can put in Excel and Word and shortcuts. Uh, we have our webinars, of course, that you can check out and register for so you can see what the next uh, webinar will be. So you can see, actually, Joel is going to be doing the next webinar, Consistency, Compassion, and Communication. Great customer service. Oh, there's a web accessibility webinar, too. I teach accessible documents in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, but we have this instructor, Mary, oh, really like her. I sat through her web. I've already sat through her web accessibility. So any of you that do any kind of web stuff, if you wanted to see what to, if you want to learn uh, how to make your web pages accessible for people that use screen readers and things like that, she's going to run a webinar for that. Lots of good stuff. So check that out, guys. Let me just check the messages. Okay, so you guys are making some comments. Oh, it seems like you guys like these tips. This is great. Do what you do best and <laughs> delegate there. I like that. Do what you do best and delegate the rest. Love this. That's great. Thank you. Love to learn new things. Oh, you're so welcome, guys. You'll be using a lot of these. So I don't see any questions in there. Oh, and Melanie posted if you want more. I didn't realize he did this, Mel. If you want more on the four Ds, Joel talked about it in last month's time management webinar. Ah, oh, that's just such a coincidence. I didn't realize Joel did that. So she's put the link, Mel's put the link to Joel's webinar. And he talks about the four Ds and then, and then you can use it in your Outlook, which is kind of neat. I have mail folders, action, read and review. Yeah, same kind of thing. Yes, definitely. Does the dialog box prevent other emails from coming in? Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, you're talking about when you set up that, if Joyce sends an email, that dialog box pops up and you have to say, okay, you saw that. No, it doesn't prevent other messages from coming in. No, you're good there. Let me just see if anybody else has put any. Okay, amazing session. How soon will this recorded meeting? 
Oh, Melanie posted that later today. Melanie is so fast getting those up, guys. And yes, if she says later today, you'll see it later today. So you can go back and go through those steps. And I know I had to speak quickly to get through, to get this done in an hour. Um, and in YouTube, I don't know if you guys know, but you can slow down the YouTube videos. I do that all the time. So you could slow that down when you go back to it. Okay, this was great. So glad you got, we had a great turnout for this webinar. So happy to show you guys these things, a lot of fun. And hopefully uh, we'll see you in the next webinar then. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll just say goodbye. See you guys, goodbye to you here. Do this so I can look at you guys hand, face on. You're welcome. Yes, you enjoy the rest of the day too. Thanks, everybody. Take care. I'm going to go ahead and shut us down. Okay, I'll shut down too. Okay. Bye. Bye.